March the 1st is my favourite day of the year because then I have the whole of spring and summer to look forward to. When I was a little girl we used to have a row of cherry trees in the back garden and it was always amazing to me that they would all flower pretty much synchronously. Then when I went to live in California it was clear to me that these very striking seasons that I've been so used to as a child, they didn't really occur in California, it was much more subtle. It was reinforced by a visit I went to a nursery garden to buy some tulip bulbs and the person there said to me, now don't forget to put them in the fridge for six weeks before you sow them. And I thought, gosh, this is really bizarre. So I went away and read about this and it reminded me of my cherry trees in the back garden. So when I had the opportunity to set up my own lab, I decided actually this was going to be a really interesting area of science to figure out how plants sense and respond to these seasonal cues. One of the main developmental transitions that plants make in response to different seasonal cues is when to flower. Now this is a process called vernalization, the requirement for prolonged cold for flowering. And it's very important for most plant species, but also for many crop plants. It's very hard to study processes like the control of flowering time and the requirement for cold in crop plants. So we've chosen to study these questions in the reference plant, Arabidopsis thaliana. So the international plant community picked Arabidopsis thaliana as the reference plant because it has a number of advantages, predominantly its small genome size. Many plant labs use Arabidopsis because of the rapid cycling nature. They can do the genetics really fast. They produce leaves and then they make these flower stalks and seed very rapidly indeed. You can do your genetics really quickly. We of course are interested in the uh, types that actually require winter, these ones here. These plants flower very, very late. They're quite happy. They keep making leaves. They grow quite happily. They just don't flower until they've had an prolonged period of cold. And by looking at the comparison of these uh, winter types and spring types, we've been able to define the genes that determine the requirement for cold. When we cloned the genes out from Arabidopsis that uh, controlled flowering time and this ability to respond to cold, we realised we'd entered the world of epigenetics, epigenetic regulation. Epigenetics is the layer above genetics. When you look at a chromosome, the chromosome actually is made up of DNA wrapped around certain proteins. If you unravel that chromosome, it looks a little bit like a necklace with beads with the DNA wrapped around those beads. So each bead is made up of proteins and those proteins or the DNA itself can be chemically modified. You can think of the DNA as the hardware in a computer analogy and these chemical modifications as the software. The software is required to tell the hardware what to do when the gene should be active. Epigenetic regulation is at the heart of vernalization. There's one gene that encodes a break protein that blocks the plant's flowering. The break gene is turned off by the cold temperatures of winter, but then stays off as the plants come into spring. Perhaps unexpected because as the temperatures warm up, you might have expected the gene to switch back on again. So we would describe the gene as being epigenetically silenced. So a short period of cold is not enough to switch the break gene off. The plant needs the whole of the length of winter. And that's because each cell switches the gene off independently. That happens with a fairly low probability, so that it takes many weeks for all of the cells in the plant to have switched the gene off. This means that the plants won't flower too soon if there's a short period of cold temperature in autumn. They have to wait until the whole of the winter has passed, spring has arrived, and then the bloom can occur. The next big challenge in the lab is to figure out how plants actually feel winter. Winter isn't a nice constant temperature for many weeks. If you think about what the temperatures can do in winter, they can go up to perhaps 10 or 12 degrees in the day and down to minus four at night. How does a plant know that it's had the whole of winter? A lot of people ask me, how did I get to this position? And when I look back, I think it was the real enjoyment of doing practicals at university that kept me in research. 
I then had this wonderful opportunity of going and living in California as a postdoctoral fellow. And then when I look at the area of science I picked, it was this comment from the person selling me tulip bulbs that really made such an influence on my life. I chose to follow this question of, you know, how do plants sense and respond to winter? And that's opened out into this really interesting area of epigenetic regulation. So my advice would be follow your curiosity and see where it takes you.